This is something I've always wanted to do. One, take 12 A and B cameras. most successful girl group at the moment, Eternal, have been packing dance floors up and down the country. Eternal are telling boys to back off. The sassy foursome say they've no time for loving with their third smash single, Burning Up the Network Chart. Esther, Bernie, Lou... Once upon a time, there was a guy named Dennis Inglesby, and he found Bernie. And I introduced him to Esther, and... I met him in a club and introduced him to Kelly. And Eternal was born. <laughs> I had the sound that I wanted. I just had to put the faces. And uh, it was relevant to me that all these girls could sing. It's all right, all right. You don't have to worry. You're gonna love what you hear. I met Louise first in the nightclub. Just dancing away. I asked if she could sing. She was 15 then. <laughs> my mum my was like, oh, that's an old one, Louise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had to go and see their mum. I had to go to church with them. I do all the things that a dad would do, I suppose. We had time to get to know each other, to feel comfortable you know, with each other, so that, you know, we were strong and as a group before we went out, you know, and to perform in front of an audience. We actually have had a year to get together and to know each other and to not sign any deals, just find out if this is what we really wanted to do. And then only when the four of us actually sat down and said, yeah, we want to do this, did we actually go ahead and start it as a proper career. But every group has to be manufactured to a certain extent because you can't be four normal young girls off of the street, go in, out there and all of a sudden have multi-stardom and be getting top ten hits in every country. You have to have people behind you. You have to have people saying, well, you can't go on stage like that because it doesn't work. You, you have to be something different. So anyone, anywhere who is doing something successful is manufactured to a certain extent. It's just life.
We were just grateful to be working with anybody at that stage. You know, we was new coming out, we was working on our album, and every producer we went in to work with, we looked upon as, you know, we're grateful to be here and doing this. It was all, it was all a mixture. We never went in and felt dominated by any of the producers. They were all on a level where it was like, well, you give your input and I'll give mine, and we'll get the best out of, you know, out of both sides and and that's what we did you know everybody had their ideas and put them in I mean other producers were more dominant and were like this is the sound I'd like to get from you girls and you know and their sound was good so we were like great we'd love to go with that idea and other producers were more willing to you know kind of compromise, compromise and you know we mixed a lot of ideas together and came up with the best that we could give but at number one those new jail swingers eternal we were like Eternal? No, it's got to be bad boys or someone else, you know, not us, but so we was chuffed. It was kind of like a, a magazine that we'd been in during the beginning of the year and the end of the year before Stay and after Stay came out. So to go out there and actually get this award, we was all pleased. I'd just like to thank all of you for your support and thank God. Thank you very much.
to relax. We just sort of you know, hang out and chill with our family and our friends and things like that. You know, those are the kind of things that you miss because being on the road 24-7, it can be a bit tiring and you miss the home comforts of just having your mum and dad and family around you. You know, they've been there from the very outset, so they've known what we're, we're like. <laughs> My mum, like, she's been there to bath me, to burp me, all that. <laughs> so she, it's kind of normal, do you know what I mean? She ain't going to treat me any different, and nor, nor do my brothers or my sisters. I know for the rest of the girls, it's the same as well. When I do walk the street, I'm, I make sure I'm going to a certain destination. Like I'm coming from A, I'm going straight to B, I'm not stopping anywhere <laughs> so that no one can catch me on the streets. But I know that it's happened quite a lot to Kelly and Vernie and Louise. But for me, I'm just like, straight there, straight back home. Someone always manages to see me and tell me I'm doing something that I'm definitely not. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's OK. Um, fans seem to be really nice. The fans that we have are really nice people, and they're the kind of people that are more, like, on the respective level. They're like, how you doing? I really appreciate your music, and I really like what you're doing. And we're like, oh, thanks. And that's it. And then they leave you alone. And so it's not really a hassle. It's, it's nice. It's a nice feeling. Did the ex Eternal live up to your expectations? They were better, way better they were, than we thought they'd they be. They were really, really great. Right. We really enjoyed it. And how did you feel when you, when you finally got to meet them and give them a cuddle? They and were stuff? so cool. Mm. Thank you and Elsa. <laughs> it was really, really, it was cool. Yeah, really, mm. really cool. I think the, the place that's played the most impact in my mind is um, New Zealand. That was a, it was a, for all, it was a lovely country. It was really pretty over there. The people were really nice. But we also um, played at a school over there, an all-girls school. And it's a school where a lot of Maori people go. And um, instead of us going there just to perform and do our performance for them, they actually did a performance for us before we went in. And it was amazing. It was so touching. They sang. They did Maori dancing. And I think all of us, it was just, mm -hmm. it was amazing. Nice. Never seen anything like it. They hadn't heard all of our songs before. They'd maybe heard Stay a little bit. And to actually get us to go to the school, they'd won a competition and I'm um, writing a poem about why we should come to the school. Eternal is the flyest group around. With the fattest beats and the coolest sound. Their beautiful voices and their finest style. Make everyone dance, hip hop and smile. They, they visit down under with a concert up for graves. So surely be one of my uncle's daughter's eggs. They should perform at our school because they'll get the biggest reception and the greatest applause. If, it, if Eternal performs at our school, it will mean that they'll see the most multicultural people there are to be seen. But they gave us such an amazing reaction. It was the best audience ever. <laughs> exciting because uh, uh, for, for all of us I think the first thing was we were all going to America which for um, for Kelly she'd, she'd been to America but not to actually New York if I'm correct so we were all excited and like, it was in the studio like three days before we went and Nigel Lois was telling us all the stories and <laughs> how to be careful and don't look like we're um, tourists don't look up in the sky <laughs> like this and keep your money in a safe place where no one can get it and it's like it's, it's like nearly impossible for you to even get your money when you want to spend it mm. but um we we're just really looking forward to it mm. and then when we actually got there and we started the work um the first time we went was there for like 11 days and believe we worked 11 days <laughs> oh, it was like early in the morning till late at night yeah. and like we got up and we was out like from nine and we were back at four and then that went on for the full 11 days and we we're like Dennis, we need a break. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, but we really enjoyed ourselves. I think it, the reason why we kept going was because we were so much on a buzz. It's the first time being there, first time being in a group together and going out recording mm. with um, different producers. Mm. We was really on a buzz. It was nice. We're 
weird because at first we'd go into a radio station and um, they'd play the song, go, oh, we have eternal, and then we'd sort of say, hi, how you doing, and hello, and they'd go, oh, you're English. <laughs> and say, yeah. <laughs> and so some radio stations and people we met didn't even realise that we were English who had just sort of listened to the music, hadn't read up on the group. Then obviously others had read up on the group and they were like, so was it like being over here in the States and all the way from England and how's your success everywhere else? But um, The Americans are more on the style of music you're, you're into and how good you are, so... Mm. Yeah. It's all about talent and not where your talent is from. Yeah. As long as you've got it and you put it down on vinyl and then they, then they hear it, that's what they accept. They don't accept, you know, what your image is or whatever. That, that, that'll come second, which is so nice that they actually concentrate on the music, music before everything else. So that was a big bonus for us.
Yeah, I think every country had its different reactions, um, not just America, because I think a lot of people think America, they think black kind of thing. But um, every country had its stigma, every country had its different way about it. I mean, some countries would say to us, what does it feel like to have a white person in the band? Or they say to Louise, what does it feel like to work with three black people? Which I personally feel is a very stupid question because it's like, if you go yeah, to school, yeah. if you we go to school, you, you have friends. You have white friends, you have Asian friends, you have black friends. So what, 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 what's the difference yeah, with working worse, to someone and having a friend? Isn't it? We've heard mm. in an interview, do you hit Louise? <laughs> like, or what? do you hate Louise? No, in fact, he said, do you hit Louise? And yeah. I said to him, do you mean hate Louise? He goes, no, do you hit Louise? I was like, why? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other love like this. This one. Wait, you look. You look so fine. I'm so. looking at you for sure. You were looking at me. So. Recently, we've been to Japan and other parts of South Southeast Asia, and I think Japan's got to be... It's because she got her high-tech gear. <laughs> <laughs> no, yes, Japan... she did. She got this camera. Like, I've never seen a camera like this before. It's like, does everything. It's instant everything. Instant flash, camera. instant picture, everything. There's no the going picture. to the shop to develop it. It's just done for you. It's a really wicked <laughs> camera, actually. she got some good shots. But they only pose for me now because it's instant. I mean, if they have to stand around for ages, they'll like, see you later. <laughs> We did a photo shoot where we had to eat the cakes. It was <clears> so <throat> nice. <laughs> you meant to actually just take one bite out of them all and, and taste them. They were gone. <laughs> <laughs> <She was> like, <laughs> <laughs> they were good. 
they all got 10 out of 10. Every performance, um, to a certain extent, they're different and they're the same because you want to give a good performance the best that you can do and you want to make sure that people out there are enjoying themselves. <laughs> but every crowd is different, so at the same time, um, if, you, if you can feel what that crowd's feeling, then you're going to sort of treat them in a different way. How are you? Are you fine? Maybe not better than the last one, but in order for them to understand where you're coming from, you treat them in a different way. Oh, oh I'm so sorry, honey. But at the same time, you want to give them the best, and you want to make sure they get the best out of the day. We're going on now. Good luck. See you soon. Hiya. I'm bound to make a mistake. I'm bound to get halfway through a number and need the toilet. 
Um, before we go on stage, we do exactly the opposite to what most bands do, which is get themselves all hyped up. We calm ourselves down and make sure that we're focused by praying and giving thanks to the one who brought us this far, which is God. Um, we like to come collectively together and say our prayers and give thanks for whatever special that's happened that month or that day. I mean, maybe he's brought us a thousand miles to, to this audience, then we'll say thank you for bringing us there. Or whatever's going on in each other's lives, in the individual's lives, then we'll say thank you or, or help us to get through the next stage and to give pleasure to our audience that we're about to perform in front of. Right, we'll enjoy it, okay? Have a real... Give it, give it everything. Have a great time. I think we had two days, was it girls, to mm. learn so good? And I'm not a dancer, so it takes me ages. So I had not had the routine down. We were doing the Royal Variety Show, and um, behind the set, I mean, all through rehearsal, I was getting it wrong. There was not a section that I got right <laughs> all the way through rehearsal. And then, like, behind this, um, the curtain, it was, just, like, a couple of seconds before we had to go on, and we had this guy run behind stage, and there's me going, yeah, I've, I think I've got it down, I think I've got it down. And he's like, can I get a picture? <laughs> when it, like, the clock hits five, and I know I've got to be out of my house, I'm thinking, why am I doing this? <laughs> oh, not today! <laughs> and you go away for a long time, and you've got suitcases, and you're tired. And you have a good day one day, and then the next day you get homesick, and then the next day you're tired again, and all them kind of things build up for me and, and get me thinking, what am I doing? And this one time we were in the studio, and we were all really, really tired because we'd been rehearsing all day long. And everybody was stressed, and everyone was tired, and the more we were working, the more it was going wrong. And I was just like, I was like this, I was like this, if I don't get my harmony right, I'm just going to shoot myself, you know, I was just like so mad, I just wanted to go home and say, forget this, I just can't do this. And you forget that there are so many other things that you do, you know, that make the job so worth it. You only have to go out there and do one good performance and it go well and you forget all of that. Nobody knows the trouble Nobody knows
when I was younger, if I, and I, I would say to my mum, but mum, I want to wear big clumpy boots and da da da. Oh, I'd be like, but you're a girl, Kelly, you know, oh, you know, my and whatever, still you know, <laughs> and you know, you're supposed to dress in a feminine type way, and I, we'd never been that way. We'd always been, well, I like my boots and my jeans and whatever and my dungarees. So that's our kind of way. So I think inwards. Our personalities come over as sexy, but we don't necessarily have to dress that way. He flicks his eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> we don't necessarily have to dress that way in order to show that we are sexy girls. We are still girls, you know what I mean?
know, the music business isn't straight cut. It's very cutthroat, as a lot of people know and say. So if you, if you believe in you know, your religion and yourself, then you can get through a lot of things that go on from day to day. Mm -hmm. In a sense, I'm not going to tell you how you should feel about God or, or let's go to church or let's get saved. I'm, we're, all of us are not like that. We feel that religion is a personal thing for us. <laughs> so I couldn't quite reach the option. Okay. Are we going for that bit, yeah? The taller I become The bosses. It depends on what you're actually what you're actually doing. Because Kelly's very hot on um, getting things right when it comes to dance wise, and Vernie's like very hot on getting things done when it's singing wise. So it depends on what position you're actually in and what we're doing at the, at the time. Argue seems like a harsh word to me. We don't kind of argue. We'll discuss. That's how we tend to deal with things that we disagree with. I mean, we're four individual people with our own morals and standards of life, so when we, those are brought together, you know, there are kind of things that don't fit. Always, no matter cause, something inside so strong. I know that I can make it, cause you're doing me wrong, so wrong. I thought that my pride was gone. When we're not working, we'll write down our ideas and things because that's what we're planning to do for the next album, get more into the writing and even in, into the producing of the next album. We want to get more involved with our music and have more control um, on what goes down on vinyl and what goes out. So that's what we're planning for the next album. But we're not planning to change the direction. Mm. We're going to stay in the same direction we did this time and that's just recording the songs that we like and the music that we like and things like that. And picking the best ones. That's yeah. right. We actually feel that everything we do is for a reason. Um, that there's nothing that actually happens around us that we feel just happens. Um, and that's probably what our philosophy is. Everything we do, there's a reason for it. And, you know, we're grateful for it. And for those who <coughs> want to be like us, keep trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we always say love what you do and do what you love. Mm -hmm. Definitely. of your hand and I understand how much I need your love you have given me wings and I can do
secrets I'll keep They're safe here with me My arms will comfort you There'll be no river to wind No mountain to hide Yeah.